In vector calculus, a vector field is an assignment of a vector to each point in a subset of space. A vector field in the plane, for instance, can be visualized as a collection of arrows with a given magnitude and direction each attached to a point in the plane. Vector fields are often used to model, for example, the speed and direction of a moving fluid throughout space, or the strength and direction of some force, such as the magnetic or gravitational force, as it changes from point to point. The elements of differential and integral calculus extend to vector fields in a natural way. When a vector field represents force, the line integral of a vector field represents the work done by a force moving along a path. And under this interpretation conservation of energy is exhibited as a special case of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Vector fields can usefully be thought of as representing the velocity of a moving flow in space. And this physical intuition leads to notions such as the divergence and curl. In coordinates, a vector field on a domain in n-dimensional Euclidean space can be represented as a vector-valued function that associates an n-tuple of real numbers to each point of the domain. This representation of a vector field depends on the coordinate system, and there is a well-defined transformation law in passing from one coordinate system to the other. Vector fields are often discussed on open subsets of Euclidean space, but also make sense on other subsets such as surfaces, where they associate an arrow tangent to the surface at each point. More generally, vector fields are defined on differentiable manifolds, which are spaces that look like Euclidean space on small scales, but may have more complicated structure on larger scales. In this setting, a vector field gives a tangent vector at each point of the manifold. Vector fields are one kind of tensor field. Definition Vector fields on subsets of Euclidean space given a subset S in Rn. A vector field is represented by a vector-valued function V. S Rn in standard Cartesian coordinates. If each component of V is continuous, then V is a continuous vector field, and more generally V is a CK vector field if each component of V is K times continuously differentiable. A vector field can be visualized as assigning a vector to individual points within an n-dimensional space. Given two CK vector fields V, W defined on S and a real-valued CK function F defined on S. The two operations scalar multiplication and vector addition define the module of CK vector fields over the ring of CK functions. Coordinate transformation law in physics. A vector is additionally distinguished by how its coordinates change when one measures the same vector with respect to a different background coordinate system. The transformation properties of vectors distinguish a vector as a geometrically distinct entity from a simple list of scalars, or from a covector. Thus, suppose that is a choice of Cartesian coordinates in terms of which the components of the vector v are and suppose that are n functions of the she defining a different coordinate system. Then the components of the vector v in the new coordinates are required to satisfy the transformation law. Such a transformation law is called contravariant. A similar transformation law characterizes vector fields in physics. Specifically, a vector field is a specification of n functions in each coordinate system subject to the transformation law relating the different coordinate systems. Vector fields are thus contrasted with scalar fields, which associate a number or scalar to every point in space, and are also contrasted with simple lists of scalar fields, which do not transform under coordinate changes. Vector fields on manifolds given a differentiable manifold M. A vector field on M is an assignment of a tangent vector to each point in M. More precisely, a vector field F is a mapping from M into the tangent bundle trademark so that is the identity mapping where P denotes the projection from trademark to M. In other words, a vector field is a section of the tangent bundle. 
The collection of all smooth vector fields on a smooth manifold M is often denoted by gamma or C infinity. The collection of all smooth vector fields is also denoted by examples. A vector field for the movement of air on Earth will associate for every point on the surface of the Earth a vector with the wind speed and direction for that point. This can be drawn using arrows to represent the wind. The length of the arrow will be an indication of the wind speed. A high on the usual barometric pressure map would then act as a source, and a low would be a sink, since air tends to move from high pressure areas to low pressure areas velocity field of a moving fluid. In this case, a velocity vector is associated to each point in the fluid. Streamlines, streak lines and path lines are three types of lines that can be made from vector fields. They are streak lines, as revealed in wind tunnels using smoke. Streamlines, as a line depicting the instantaneous field at a given time. Path lines, showing the path that a given particle would follow. Magnetic fields. The field lines can be revealed using small iron filings. Maxwell's equations allow us to use a given set of initial conditions to deduce for every point in Euclidean space. A magnitude and direction for the force experienced by a charged test particle at that point. The resulting vector field is the electromagnetic field. A gravitational field generated by any massive object is also a vector field. For example, the gravitational field vectors for a spherically symmetric body would all point towards the sphere's center with the magnitude of the vectors, reducing as radial distance from the body increases. Gradient field vector fields can be constructed out of scalar fields using the gradient operator. A vector field V defined on a set S is called a gradient field or a conservative field if there exists a real valued function F on S such that the associated flow is called the gradient flow, and is used in the method of gradient descent. The path integral along any closed curve gamma equals gamma in a conservative field is zero, where the angular brackets and comma denote the inner product of two vectors is a one form rather than a vector in the elementary sense. Central field AC infinity vector field over Rn zero is called a central field if where O is the orthogonal group. We say central fields are invariant under orthogonal transformations around zero. The point zero is called the center of the field, since orthogonal transformations are actually rotations and reflections. The invariance conditions mean that vectors of a central field are always directed towards or away from zero. This is an alternate definition. A central field is always a gradient field, since defining it on one semi-axis and integrating gives an anti-gradient. Operations on vector fields Line integral A common technique in physics is to integrate a vector field along a curve, i.e., to determine its line integral. Given a particle in a gravitational vector field, where each vector represents the force acting on the particle at a given point in space, the line integral is the work done on the particle when it travels along a certain path. The line integral is constructed analogously to the Riemann integral and it exists if the curve is rectifiable and the vector field is continuous. Given a vector field V and a curve gamma parametrized by A, B, the line integral is defined as divergence. The divergence of a vector field on Euclidean space is a function. In three dimensions, the divergence is defined by with the obvious generalization to arbitrary dimensions. The divergence at a point represents the degree to which a small volume around the point is a source or a sink for the vector flow, a result which is made precise by the divergence theorem. The divergence can also be defined on a Riemannian manifold, that is, a manifold with a Riemannian metric that measures the length of vectors. Curl the curl is an operation which takes a vector field and produces another vector field. The curl is defined only in three dimensions, but some properties of the curl can be captured in higher dimensions with the exterior derivative. In three dimensions, it is defined by the curl measures the density of the angular momentum of the vector flow at her point, that is, the amount to which the flow circulates around a fixed axis. 
This intuitive description is made precise by Stokes' theorem. Index of a vector field The index of a vector field is a way of describing the behavior of a vector field around an isolated zero which can distinguish saddles from saucers and sinks. Take a small sphere around the zero so that no other zeros are included. A map from this sphere to a unit sphere of dimensions n minus 1 can be constructed by dividing each vector by its length to form a unit length vector, which can then be mapped to the unit sphere. The index of the vector field at the point is the degree of this map. The index of the vector field is the sum of the indices of each zero. The index will be zero around any non-singular point. It is plus one around sources and sinks and minus one around saddles. In two dimensions the index is equivalent to the winding number. For an ordinary sphere in three-dimension space it can be shown that the index of any vector field on the sphere must be 2. This leads to the hairy ball theorem which shows that every such vector field must have a zero. This theorem generalizes to the Poincaré-Hopf theorem which relates the index to the Euler characteristic of the space. History Vector fields arose originally in classical field theory in 19th century physics, specifically in magnetism. They were formalized by Michael Faraday, in his concept of lines of force, who emphasized that the field itself should be an object of study, which it has become throughout physics in the form of field theory. In addition to the magnetic field, other phenomena that were modeled as vector fields by Faraday include the electrical field and light field, flow curves. Consider the flow of a fluid through a region of space. At any given time, any point of the fluid has a particular velocity associated with it, thus there is a vector field associated to any flow. The converse is also true. It is possible to associate a flow to a vector field having that vector field as its velocity. Given a vector field V defined on S, one defines curves gamma on S such that for each t in an interval I by the Picard-Lindelof theorem, if V is Lipschitz continuous there is a unique C1 curve gamma x for each point x in S so that the curves gamma x are called flow curves of the vector field V, and partition S into equivalence classes. It is not always possible to extend the interval to the whole real number line. The flow may for example reach the edge of S in a finite time. In two or three dimensions one can visualize the vector field as giving rise to a flow on S. If we drop a particle into this flow at a point P it will move along the curve gamma P in the flow depending on the initial point P. If P is a stationary point of E then the particle will remain at P. Typical applications are streamline in fluid, geodesic flow, and one-parameter subgroups and the exponential map in Lie groups. Complete vector fields A vector field is complete if its flow curves exist for all time. In particular, compactly supported vector fields on a manifold are complete. If X is a complete vector field on M, then the one-parameter group of diffeomorphisms generated by the flow along X exists for all time. Difference between scalar and vector field The difference between a scalar and vector field is not that a scalar is just one number while a vector is several numbers. The difference is in how their coordinates respond to coordinate transformations. A scalar is a coordinate whereas a vector can be described by coordinates, but it is not the collection of its coordinates. Example 1 This example is about two-dimensional Euclidean space where we examine Euclidean and polar coordinates. Thus x equals r cos theta and y equals r sin theta and also r2 equals x2 plus y2 cos theta equals by 1 half and sin theta equals y 1 half. Suppose we have a scalar field which is given by the constant function 1, and a vector field which attaches a vector in the r direction with length 1 to each point. More precisely, they are given by the functions let us convert these fields to Euclidean coordinates. The vector of length 1 in the r direction has the x coordinate cos theta and the y coordinates in theta. Thus in Euclidean coordinates the same fields are described by the functions we see that while the scalar field remains the same, 
the vector field now looks different. The same holds even in the one-dimensional case, as illustrated by the next example. Example 2 Consider the one-dimensional Euclidean space R with its standard Euclidean coordinate x. Suppose we have a scalar field and a vector field which are both given in the x coordinate by the constant function 1, thus, we have a scalar field which has the value 1 everywhere and a vector field which attaches a vector in the x direction with magnitude 1 unit of x to each point. Now consider the coordinate she equals 2x. If x changes 1 unit then she changes 2 units. But since we wish the integral of v along a path to be independent of coordinate, this means v asterisk dx equals v asterisk d she. So from x increase by 1 unit, she increases by 1 half unit, so v must be 2. Thus this vector field has a magnitude of 2 in units of she. Therefore, in the she coordinate the scalar field and the vector field are described by the functions which are different. F relatedness. Given a smooth function between manifolds, mn, the derivative is an induced map on tangent bundles, f asterisk, trademark tn. Given vector fields v, m trademark and w, n, tn, we say that w is f related to v if the equation w f asterisk equals f asterisk v holds. If i is f related to y, i equals 1, 2, then the Lie bracket, v1, v2, is f related to, w1, w2. Generalizations. Replacing vectors by p vectors yields p vector fields, taking the dual space and exterior powers yields differential k forms, and combining these yields general tensor fields. Algebraically, vector fields can be characterized as derivations of the algebra of smooth functions on the manifold, which leads to defining a vector field on a commutative algebra as a derivation on the algebra, which is developed in the theory of differential calculus over commutative algebras. Bibliography Hubbard, H. Hubbard, B. Vector calculus, linear algebra, and differential forms. A unified approach. Upper Saddle River, NJ. Prentos Hall. ISBN 0 13 657 Warner, Frank. 1971. Foundations of Differentiable Manifolds and Lie Groups. New York, Berlin. Springer Verlag. ISBN 0 387 908 3 Buthby, William. An Introduction to Differentiable Manifolds in Riemannian Geometry, Pure and Applied Mathematics, Volume 120, Orlando, Florida, Academic Press. ISBN 0-12116053-X.